Hey everybody, so today is day seven. We're gonna do a recap of the last seven days we've done. I wanna start off by saying if you don't feel like you've done too many gains yet, handstands, headstands, crow, which we're gonna be getting to, all these things are skills and skills don't get taught overnight. Um, but if you did learn it already, awesome, I'm super pumped for you. And if not, learning the aspects and the concepts to it are huge wins. The more that you get the muscle memory that comes with that and the skill set, the strength and the mobility for it, you're gonna get there. It just takes progression, repetition. And if any day feels impossible, it's okay to repeat days, kind of rotate them, whatever you feel is required for yourself. That being said, today's a recap day, so we're gonna go over the seven days we've already done. We're gonna start off with our wrist health, go into some retraction, review as we always do, kind of the fundamentals of a handstand and then um, warm us up, do a few headstand things that we haven't done yet. Um, so I wanna keep progressing the headstand because the more balance you get into that hollow body shape while inverted in an easier place, when you get on your hands, it gets easier. And we're gonna finish with our two holds. So let's get to it, straight to wrist health. So we're just gonna do a few wrist circles to begin with. We do these every day, so you should be starting to feel a bit more comfortable with them. Um, we're gonna go for eight to 10, whatever speed you're going to will determine how many circles you do. Just try to connect with your breath and kind of let everything else from your day go away and just connect to the movement you're doing now. So big breath in. If you're feeling that you're actually making progress here, maybe bring your wrists a bit closer. We're gonna do about two more and switch directions. So one, two. Awesome, we're gonna bring our fingers forward. We've done these many times now. So cat cows, we're gonna do three just to kind of wake up our spine and then we're gonna do three where we are just adding a bit of a range of motion into our wrists. So big breath in, stomach down. Exhale really high up with that spine. Now we're gonna go forward on it, so breath in. And then exhale. Breath in, exhale, breath in, exhale. Awesome, so those are all extension exercises. Now we're gonna go into the opposite direction, so we're gonna do the flexion. I know we've gone over all these things, but repetition is key, so pointing fingers towards ourselves right now. Biceps forward, so never back, forward. Nice long, Long arms protract whenever possible to remember that action. So pushing away and we're just going back and forth here. So if you remember day one of doing these, it may have felt quite a bit tighter. If you're feeling already looser here, that again is incredible because this at the beginning for me was extremely difficult. Um, now it's just kind of something I do regularly. I still have a lot of sensation in this direction, but um, it definitely isn't something that is overwhelming like it was at the beginning. And then we'll do one last variation for flexion. So palm up, we're just gonna elbow touch, bicep, and then go towards the anchored hand. Or away from it, I should say. Elbow down. And let's go, we're doing good here. Gonna go for another two. And switch. So elbow down, bicep forward. You're getting into your elbow. And then into your wrist. Just one last one. 
Awesome. So now we're going to get into protraction. So we're not going to work a bunch of hands, uh, forearm strength drills. We're actually just going to go into protraction because it on itself, we're going to be putting weight on your wrist. You're going to be working the strength of your forearms. Um, so protraction, the first one, I'll try and face you a bit more just so that you can remember what it looks like. And then from there, the next one, we're going to flow through the entire exercise. Fingers pointing forward, same thing as handstands, trying to keep your fingers, your hands underneath your shoulders, shoulder width apart as the spread. Bring your knees back as if you're doing a tabletop, trying to stack everything. So trying to hold that hollow body shape or that cat spine, you're just gonna bring your chest down and then back up. We're doing that for five, four, three, two, one. Second round, we're gonna bring our legs all the way back, do this in plank, so really tall spine. Bring that butt down by squeezing your glutes. And then from there, still same thing, a one, two, three, four, five. So you got two options for the next exercise. You can use your handy dandy blocks. Bring them even with mid thigh and together we're going to do five where we're going to bring our butt up as much as we can as well as our knees. Trying to keep everything leveled with our toes staying on the ground. Our toes should be extended. So laces aspect of the feet on the ground. Big breath in. We're doing five of this and then the next round we're not going to take the breaks between. We're just going to go through the entire thing. We're going to feel a good push through this exercise. Um, later on, we might do two rounds of this, but for now, let's enjoy this. With time, you should be feeling like it's easier to get lower and lower, but we're still in week one, guys. Let's go. So, first two fingers, biceps forward, lift. For one, knees don't come all the way down. Two, three, four. Five, and see if you can hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we're gonna do this whole session without any pausing this time. So tabletop, flex your feet. We're gonna go right to it, so chest down and up for one, two, three biceps, always forward, arms locked, five, I'm gonna do one extra. Going into plank, squeeze that glute or that butt. Cat shaped spine, holding this plank for one, two, three, four, five. Bring those knees up, going to the top of your feet. Grab the blocks as needed. Bring them halfway through that thigh. We're going up for one, two, three, four, five, hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Those are always great. The more reps you get into those and everything is lengthening, the more you're gonna feel that push strength come in. But let's get into the next part that we've gone over. The hollow body shape, I know we practiced it while we were in plank there and keeping that cat spine, but we're gonna do it while we're working our core. So one of the biggest changes for strengthening your handstand is when you can truly get that hollow body shape. You actually need to end up, end up getting a really tight midsection. It's just a perk of handstanding. So on your back. Big breath in. We're gonna keep our heels even with our knees for the first row. We're doing like an inverted crow. Keep that tailbone on the bottom of it lifted slightly. Arms up, we're going for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, we're gonna keep everything tight as a unit now. Touch your toes to your chest, knees to your chest, sorry. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten on your last one. Keep that lower spine up. Try and see if you can bring your legs a little bit farther while doing that. And then arms up for five or ten, nine, eight, seven. See if you can lift a little bit more. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's get a little bone is hip stretch here and do a little happy baby. Oh, just a little way of releasing your spine for a second. <sighs> Round two. So back to that crow type shape, arms up. We're gonna push for 10, nine, eight. If you need to pause, that's okay. Six, five, four, three, Two, one, arms down. Everything tight this time. Touch your toes. Lift your lower spine for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So kind of going a bit farther with the knees if you can. Lift that lower spine, shoulders up for 10, nine, eight, and seven, and six, and five, and four, three. Lift a little bit more, lift that ceiling. Two, one. Just to add a little bit more mobility. Bring that leg across. If this is a lot, keeping that mid toe, even with mid knee, grab across. And if it's not too bad, grab the inside of the foot, grab the inside of the opposite. We're just gonna squeeze that. Whew. Trying to keep our lower spine down and just hinging our knees towards ourselves. Whew. Just always opening up that glute whenever possible. And we're gonna do the opposite side for that stretch. What we do on one side, we try to do on the other. So keeping that lower spine down and then hinging closer. Awesome. And just allowing some time to breathe. Okay, so now we're gonna get into our headstand play. So, oh, there's no button on this hat. Okay, perfect. Um, so for this, you know, I'll just take it off regardless. Um, for this, we're actually gonna go closer. Let's keep getting closer to this wall. It's our friend, Paul is, is the best. Paul the wall, good times. The closer we get to the wall, the easier it is to stack. I know I've said this like many, many times, but it'll just feel more and more so. The closer you get to it, you'll know, you'll know the truth of it. Um, so we're gonna get a bit closer. We're gonna go for traditional headstand. So boom, make that triangle, top of your head. So crease of your palm, crease of your nose, where that finger lands, middle finger, that's where you're putting the weight on the ground. And then from there, we're coming up. What we're gonna do is 10. So my magic number for reps is technically 10. It makes me feel like I'm comfortable landing a skill. We're just gonna go with it. No science behind that, but it just feels like a good number. Double digits are always nice. So we're gonna go up into that headstand. One foot's gonna stay up. The other one's gonna come to it. We're gonna bring our knees down, touch the wall, bring one leg up. The other one's gonna come to it. I don't care if you walk your foot up that wall to bring it to it. And then you're gonna bring it back down to a tuck, touch the wall. We're going for 10. If it's two, if it's five rounds of two, if it's 10 rounds of one, Whatever it takes, you can pause to finish it, up to you. So let's just go for it. If you need to watch me for the first one or two and pause and you wanna join in after, also okay. I'm doing two rounds of five, um, but like I said, do what works for you. I'm getting close. So elbows, fingers together, interlace, bottom pinky in, just a safety measure. If we're rolling over, tuck in that chin, let go of the fingers, roll out, just do it like a little tuck ball. Enjoy that. The more times we do it, the easier it is. Big breath in. You'll notice whenever I invert, I'll take one breath and then one second. I go for it. 
So like I said, one leg up. If you need to take a few steps to join it, that's okay. Try to hold that hollow body shape. We're gonna bring our knees down. The lower you can go, the better. If you're stuck like here before you lose it and you just go back to that wall, that's okay. But if you can go lower, go for it. Bring the one foot to the wall, raise the other one up. Touch, touch, touch. Bring the feet together, that's two. Go into a tuck. Bring it really tight if you can. Touch, opposite leg goes up. Big breath, and remember to protract through your arms so it's lighter on your head. Touch, touch, touch. Big toes touching together after. Oh, there's one you going go into a tuck. Bring it back, that's three. Touch, touch. Toes together, heels together. Squeeze your glutes. Try to feel like you know where you are in space. Knees down. That's four. Last one for this round. Together. Big breath. And then exit. Taking time to ease out of that, kind of finding your space again, that's okay. I know I went really slow there. Every tuck was very controlled. If you were coming down faster or slower or whatever worked for you, awesome. We're just trying to get repetition. Time upside down is time earned. You're gonna get more and more conscious of where your body is. That's known as proprioception. We're doing that inverted. So knowing where your body is in space is super important. It makes it easier to control everything. It's easier to catch yourself if you know where you are early. We'll do our second round. So one more, a few more big breaths before we even go for it. So just big breath in through your nose. Two more. And one last one. I'm also gonna do a small chest opener just because Whenever I'm doing even handstands or anything else, I'm pushing so much that I feel kind of tight in a flexion shape. So doing the opposite really always feels good for me. So we'll do that together once. So just a big breath in and see if you can bring your fingers down. One more breath. Awesome. Okay, so let's go for round two. As I said, the closer you get, the easier it is. I know it gets a bit scarier as you do that, but um, just trust your process. Go to where it feels right and with time get closer. So boom, boom, interlace fingers, bottom pinky in. I already know where it is, but top of your head by the crease of your nose. And let's go for it. So one, bring the foot up. See if you can just glide right to it. Big toes together, tuck. We're going for two. Knees coming down. One foot to the wall, other one up. Bring your feet together. We're going for three. One foot to the wall, the other one up. Bring it back together. Bring it down. Bring the foot there. Opposite one, this is gonna be four. And bring it down. One foot to the wall, sorry, I want to go out and see how deep I can go. Both feet together. Bring the tuck, and we're coming out. And that was round two. So everything, if you have more mobility, getting that tuck tight is impossible if you can't even do a squat, right? Like not being able to bring your lower or your upper hips to your lower stomach is, is practically a necessity for moving. Well, in many fashions, especially the shapes for handstands. So everything getting easier happens when your body moves with more ease. Let's do our last two holds, so our 15 second holds. 
and that'll be it for today. I hope you're enjoying this. I, f I hope you think these are creative or different or I hope they, they're things that are new to you. And if not, I hope you enjoy putting that rep that time in as well. So stacking, trying to keep hands underneath their shoulders. Um, it's always hard to do, so I do recommend filming. I'm probably wider, I tend to do that. Um, so it's something I have to work on and protracting as well because I'm so much more practiced at bent arm strength that you might see that I have a slight bend in my arm, uh, my handstand, something I'm working on, but just to be conscious about it. So film yourself, you will see those things. This is not um, something that's out or uncommon. So being able to fix that, it just takes some time and some work, right? Just gonna check, we are still getting some. Perfect, so last two handstands, big breath in. Exhale, big breath in. Come on up. So as I said, it gets easier as you come closer. Big breath in. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Awesome. So also practicing how to get out if needed is always important. Feel comfortable with that. It might be a faster switch. Um, so get comfortable with taking a few breaths after as well. I'm actually not that bad. I do this all the time, but it is a big learning curve. We're gonna go for our last hold in a few seconds. We'll do like we did yesterday. Um, just because I know that I'm really tight. I don't know if you are, if you're a lifter or anything like that. You may feel your upper body is kind of like, whoa, holding these shapes up for a longer period of time is getting tough. It will either get tougher if you don't work on mobility or easier just because of length of time in practice. But let's make sure we kind of add some stuff to open it up as well. So elbows on your blocks. Big breath in, we're just gonna do three breaths. So just bring your chest through, try to point our fingers towards our back. One. Two. Three. Awesome. So let's do our last handstand hold. And we have done a whole week, guys. I am so pumped for anyone who's never done any of these things before and you've gone through these things be kind to yourself this has taken me a long time to establish all of these drills did not come over one day so seven don't think that that's a normal expectation but i do i am doing it this way because we, this is a 30-day handstand course handstands might take months years for some people maybe they've never broken through to it so I'm really hoping that this breakthrough program by giving you different things that break it down different ways makes it possible. So let's do our second hold. Big breath in. And let's go. I'll switch legs this time. We're going for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so one last time. I say this at the end of each class, but reach out to me if you have any additional questions. If you want to make, if you want me to make videos for additional help in areas, if you're already noticing that, oh, my core is weak, my arms, my anything of that sort, hit me up. Um, don't be shy, but we will continue to work them. This is 30 days, we're seven in only. We're not even a third of the way through, we're not even a quarter of the way through. Quarter would be essentially, well, 28, seven times four, right? So 
pretty much almost there, but either way, just enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey is the whole point of this. Um, cheers. Namaste.